Welcome everybody to another episode of Alta's Head to Head. Today we have a very special guest with us, Andrea Vaknas. Uh, she loves to be called Andy, so I'm gonna call her Andy. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be hosting her today for another episode of our Alta's Head to Head. I hope you guys like it. Me. Sure, Andy. Thanks for being here and thanks for having the time, actually, to interview us. So, Andy, um, this interview is going to be very cordial and friendly and, you know, I want to know who is Andy. So, please go ahead and maybe tell me something about yourself, tell me something about your background and then so the audience know you a little bit. Okay. Well, I was born a long, long time ago. I'm not going to tell you when. <laughs> and I am actually from the Rhineland originally. I was born in Koblenz, um, grew up there for nine years. Then we moved to Darmstadt because of my father's professional shift. Um, and Darmstadt's near Frankfurt. And um, I lived, stayed, lived there for another nine years. And then I moved on to Freiburg, so where I started my studies and professional not professional career, that was only a little later. And I lived there for another nine years, so you can actually take your pick. Um, in the meantime, um, when I lived in Freiburg, I actually split up the time there. So I also spent some time in England, which is where my heart is to this day. And um, I also lived in the Netherlands for um, some time. So um, Now, question for you is, Let's come down to Altus. Um, how did you find the organization? How did you uh, get in? You, you were the Altus ex-chair. You did a lot for the organization. I, I talked to a lot of people. Everybody only agrees with that. And of course, we as a community, we are always thankful for the people who work for our community. My question to you is, so tell us, walk me through your Altus story. And, and also, um, I want to ask you um, whether you recommend organizations such as Altus to young, new sure. teachers. For sure, for sure. Um, yes, Altus and all our co-organizations all over Germany and in England worldwide. That is such, a, such an important group, organization for teachers to group up with for sure, and I'm so glad that I found Altus because, so I started from the back actually, okay. um, because that actually helped me for the first time in all my teaching experience to connect and exchange thoughts and ideas with teacher because so far I always was on my own teaching as a freelance teacher. You're not really like in a school where you're part of a whole system of a whole network I mean, of course, I knew fellow teachers, I knew colleagues, yeah, but they would be French colleagues. They would teach French, for example, and not English, which, yeah, to a certain ex extent, you can exchange your thoughts, but French is different to English. Sure. I don't speak any French or hardly any French, so it was different. I needed somebody to say, yes, this task does work, this one doesn't. Um, so, yeah, for sure, and it has changed my life, for sure. Um, you asked me how I came to Altus? Yes, how did you, how did you know about Altus yeah. and, and what's your experience? I came, I first came across Altus when I went to a workshop which was, I think it was with Michael Swan and okay. Catherine Walters. And what year was that? That must have been 2014, oh, okay. summer of 2014. It was either that or with David Crystal. Okay. And these are people I knew from when I was a student. Michael Swan being the great grammarian who comes into his workshops and introduces himself as, hi, I'm Mike, I like grammar, which is a shock to everybody, but sure. I think sure. <laughs> really sure. good, so that's funny. David Crystal, everybody knows, of course. He was my linguistic, one of my linguistic gods when I was okay. a student. Okay. Um, and I was just interested in seeing these people. And Altus actually co-authorated with a publisher 
at the time and I came to see these people and then there was one of our great predecessors which was um, Christina Key oh, and yes. she was there um, and her together with the then event manager Marlene Lawrence um, these two jumped at me and made me there and then at the very first um, workshop I, I participated in sign my name up for Alta wow, and yeah yeah oh yeah definitely <laughs> they I, 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 I prefer to say they lured me into okay. this group uh -huh. um, and um, yeah, I wanted to think about it, but they didn't really give me time to think about it. And as soon as I signed up, it was like, you know, you can also pay, play an active part. And they really worked on me. And I am so grateful that they did. And I'm so grateful that I actually decided to right. do take an active part. But how did Altus develop you? How, how did, like, I'm, I'm a person out there, I'm a teacher. I have no connection to any community of, let's say, language teachers. I want to know firsthand from you, what did Eltis do for you that you would say, listen guys, if you're out there teaching English, you got to come join this community. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, of course, it was the very interesting workshops Eltis always has on offer. Um, they, through, through the social network, which is what makes Eltis, um, they know people worldwide. worldwide. They working closely with publishers, um, other language associations, we do get very interesting speakers in. Um, there's always a variety. Um, we ask members what they are interested in, take it from there, try to get workshops built on their opinion. So this is why the feedback forms are so very important and of why course. we need them. <laughs> um, and I think that aspect is the one that has had the great imp greatest impact on me because it was not only the workshop I learned from which was interesting but also to then have the exchange with colleagues with colleagues who work in different language schools at different places in different towns cities even and everybody has a different perspective we may have we may share a common background and the interest in language teaching or our profession of teaching languages but we all have a different outlook on things and I think that is that is something that thrills me that I like to see how other people go about it or if something as you asked me before what do you do if something does not work um, it just helps to to talk about it to exchange ideas I once had a Japanese student where we had a that again was for a German class though um, and we had a real culture shock because this woman, this lady was really, she was great on doing all the tasks. But as soon as I started to get her away from the book and talk to me and have a conversation, um, her very good German with the tasks was gone. And it took me forever to find out that she actually did not want to tell me any personal details and that that was the problem and that was a cultural difference. Um, and that is something I got to learn from other colleagues, from people who taught in Japan and knew a bit about the culture, so I learned from them. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay, um, from being a member of Altus to the top of Altus, how was the experience? You did a lot of things. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about your achievements, um, your experience. What, what did you like about it, uh, serving the community? Um, first of all, I just loved being with the colleagues. I got so much support from everybody with my own teaching, with my own ideas. And it was just great because I had the support. I wanted to give something back. Um, I started off as secretary for Altus. Um, so I did the paperwork. Um, I think most of us started like that. And then um, the position for event manager was free. and. Um, I just thought that would be a really, really interesting thing to do because you can actually reach out to people, get to know the interesting people, the speakers, mm. and talk to them personally, um, connect, um, which is what I absolutely loved and enjoyed about doing the job. And then, um, yeah, I moved on from there, did that for a while. I moved on from there um, to the um, deputy and then chair position. And I think it's, 
I just love Altus because... <laughs> <laughs> I see it when so you much. talk about Altus. I see it in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I just love them. I think it's a great community. And I think yeah. we all do so much for the, each other and support each other so much. And we all thrive from what we give out, um, we take. And yeah, it's give and take, basically. And um, I love giving and I love taking as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, I can't really say much more about that. Um, the events, of course, are the, the biggest thing. This is what the Altus lives off, and that's the main thing, what, what makes Altus. Um, Great. And, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Very nice point. Andy, I also want to talk to you about the, the financial aspect of language teaching, uh, because that's something I think perhaps we don't talk a lot about. You know, for, for, for language teachers, most of us are freelancers, and um, we either work for companies for language schools or directly with companies. Do you have, you have, you've had years of experience working all over the place. What's your, again, I'm a person watching this video. I just got in from the United States. I just got in from the UK, different countries. What's your suggestion? What's your experience? What is something you would like to share with us so that you the help financial. us financially? Mm, this is difficult. I don't, don't often talk about it. Um, I think we are mostly underpaid, okay. um, I, especially if you work for a language school. I do see why they can't pay as much as if you are um, just offering the classes. Mm. Of course, you can, um, can ask for more. Mm. It's a difficult question, actually. Um, I think it always depends on what situation you are in personally, but I think we are not the value to the extent, extent a business person, for example, is valued, a coach, if we talk about coaching in, in, in a business situation. Um, I think that's tricky, and I think language t teachers, language coaches, deserve so much more respect because we're not only teaching the language, if we're thinking about the business, um, business level now, um, but we also teach confidence, which is a big part, I think. Standing up, going out there, presenting, we are helping and supporting people with their own work. Definitely. And I think that that doesn't get seen enough. Very interesting. Andy, is there anything in your career that you're proud of? If you want to name one, that when you look back, you say, you know what, I did this, I'm super happy about it. Difficult, difficult question. I know. I have to That's think my job. A bit. <laughs> Take your time. I'm proud that all my students survived. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I did not give up. Okay. Uh, most, I hardly had anybody give up in the classes. So that is something I'm proud of. Okay. And maybe that those people who hated being a language student uh -huh. for, with memories from school come out and see that they use the language they learn as a tool and not as a student of English or a student of German where they have to go into literature, which I of course love, but they don't. Um, but that, that is, for them is just a tool to do what they want to do. Maybe that, so that I, I can get that into their heads and take away the inhibitions, the obstacles of daring to use the language. Absolutely. I hope. I think. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Any regrets when you look back at your career? Anything, if you went back, you would like to change or you would have done it differently? Actually, no. I, if I may, may add on to that, I was, when I finished university, I actually wanted to go into research uh -huh. because I'm a psycholinguist by wow. background. Um, and I worked, the, this is why I was in the Netherlands at the Max Planck Institute mm -hmm. for psycholinguistics for six months as a, I did like an internship mm -hmm. there. And that was my idea, that's what I wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, this didn't work out and for a long time, for years and years, I was very sad that this did not work out. Now you asked me whether I regretted anything. Looking back, I am so glad I did not, <laughs> it did not work out. Um, because I think I prefer and enjoy the teaching and leading other people, my students, participants to success a lot more than actually just sitting at my desk and doing 
I call it dry research, though I'm still very much interested in the topic. So, um, no, I'm actually happy it worked out the way it did. Mm -hmm. You're more mm. in the field kind of person. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> very interesting. Andy, it was really a pleasure. If there is anything you would like to add or if there is any topic you would like to talk about, you got I the mic, only, you got the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I can only tell people, do join Altus and um, yeah, see what we have on offer, any language association, because there's so much to take away from it. And I hope that came across a little bit. And Definitely. I'm just so happy I can still be with you lot. So. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Guys, that's, that wraps up another episode of uh, Altus Head to Head. We had a great conversation with Andy Vaknas. Our, uh, our ex Altus chair and a fantastic teacher today. Um, hope you guys liked it. If you did like it, please make sure you subscribe, you hit the like bu button, and share the video with your fellow teachers so they also can um, take advantage of Andy's experiences. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you.